today we are going to talk about a new type that we have in C language that, uh, that uh, a new type that we have in C language that uh, we need to learn and it's uh, a very important part of uh, understanding uh, the C language and also computer uh, overall. So, and as I told you, I, you've never seen me doing PowerPoint stuff. For this one, I really needed this because I have to draw, but this is, and I'm a horrible artist when it comes to dry, drawing, so I prepared this thing long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. By the way, it's Comic-Con down in the Metrotown Convention Center. I didn't know. It's Comic Con. We were over there, like like with the thing with nerds going to the to the and and you see other nerds with with <laughs> costumes like Terminator and stuff going. It was awesome. Yeah, it was so uh, two different bunch types of nerds. You know what I mean? <laughs> Separating it. It was very nice. Uh, uh, I I really wish wish I could actually leave that one. I had my Darth Vader suit and I could go to the other one, but sadly it didn't work that way. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the memory of your computer. The memory of your computer is exactly like that. Okay, it's a series of bytes back to back. When I say bytes, I mean characters, bytes, A, B, C. But each byte, you know that it is an integer. It's not a big number. Essentially, small bytes and starts from zero. That, so essentially, if you sequence it, right, put a sequence number, this is the... Uh, byte number zero, byte number one, byte number two, byte number three, and it goes. And the maximum number over here is actually the money in your pocket. It depends how much you, RAM you put on your computer. The more RAM you put, this number is going to get bigger. So uh, obviously, this is like the, the, the actual number. So, uh, so this is like, this is the address. But just to s s make it simple, I just look at the right three digits of it. So what happens in reality is a huge number because that's the number of bytes you have in, in memory. Do we understand that configuration? That's really what it is. It's a big array of characters, big array of small integers that can go from 0 to 255, each of these cells. They can go from 0 to 255 or minus 128 to positive 127. Remember that, right? I said 10 fingers. I can go from 0 to 9. Or I can go from, from minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I want to tag it, it's like that. So that's 0 to 255. Or you want to have both numbers, it's from minus 128 to positive 127. The total number of numbers is anyway 256, one, six, which we do not care. So forget what I told you. All we need to know that each cell is a small integer or whatever the data we need to keep in. This is where everything sits and works in your computer. Anything that needs to do anything has to first sit in here. Otherwise, it won't work. Like when you run your program, when your operating system takes the entire program and ha, puts it in RAM and tells the computer, go to address 103. By the way, these numbers, they call it address. The sequence number of the bytes, the sequence number of the bytes in memory, they call it address. So when I say address, I don't mean 50 Young Street. I mean the, the sequence number of the byte in memory. So it kind of splashes your executor, puts it in here, then says, go to address 103 and Run. So CPU goes over here and starts running the instructions. And that's where you see all the loops happening and all the characters running around. Somebody should see the other one in the head. It's all in there. Okay? It, no program can run from the hard drive of your computer. Before it runs, it has to go in here. Hard drive of your computer is like the lake. Okay? Have you ever tried to drink water from the lake? You can't. You need to have some smaller cup to pick it, right? So that's how it is. So essentially, this is like a bucket that you put in the lake. Lake is your hard drive, bucket is your memory. And the bigger the bucket, the slower it goes. So if you lake, you cannot move, correct? It's the lake. That's your hard drive. You can put water from lake into a barrel. 
big one, but you can move, but very, very slowly. You have to put some dolly underneath, right? That one from the barrel, you can put it in a bucket. You can go faster, but still you can't run that fast. From that bucket, you put it in a water bottle, you put it in your backpack, then you run like crazy. That's how memory works. The smaller chunk of memory, the faster it gets. Okay, these are all apparently your ULI 101 thingy. So that lake thingy is your hard drive. That barrel is RAM. Bucket is cache. They call it cache of your CPU. That water bottle, they, we call it registers inside the CPU. So the smaller it gets, the faster you can go. Are we good about memory? We understand what it is? Okay, so anything that sh should run, be accessed by your program, should get fed into the memory. Are we okay with this? If you are not okay, let me know now. Go ahead. What is the confusion? You don't understand what's going on? How much memory does your phone have? You're not sure. Like storage? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's almost like 256. 256. Yeah. 256 what? Gigabytes. Gigabytes. 256 gigabytes. It means 256 billion of these bytes. One big array of memory. That memory of your cell phone starts from zero, goes up to 256 gigs. So the smallest address in your cell phone is zero. The biggest is 256 gigs. There is no minus. Can you have minus five apples? No, 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 no. There is no C language here. We are not talking about that. We are not talking about start from, don't do those. I know what you're talking about. Like you're thinking about string and an alternator. Don't do that. Don't know there is no minus one, there is nothing. Everything in computer science starts from zero. There is no minus one in anything. You count something, it's zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay? That's person number zero, that's person number one, person number two, person number three, person number four, person number five. Obviously, with the math that you are doing, I have Five indexes, therefore six people. That's what you're saying, correct? Yeah. Six minus one is five, essentially zero to five. That's what, but don't do that math. Just keep that in mind that everything starts from zero in C language in computer science, okay? So essentially that's what we are talking about. Today we want to understand to see how we can actually deal with these numbers to see what is where, okay? So, when you actually, am I clear or make you more confused? Are we good? Okay. By the way, when I teach this, I get very excited. So when I shout, don't, don't, don't get scared. I'm not angry. I'm just being a clown, jumping up and down. Yes, sir. The analogy part, like um, you said. The lake and I think. Yeah. Okay. There is no need for analogy. The bigger the memory, the slower it is. <laughs> the bigger the load the slower you can move it. <clears throat> and I said, so yeah, so if, so uh, in ULI they, tell, they told you you have RAM, correct? You have RAM, you have cache, no, no, you have hard drive, you have RAM, you have cache, and you have registers. That's what they told you, right? No. No? no. Okay, so, so, so now, because they didn't tell you, I'm going to let you know. Okay, so, so ULI101-IPC, whatever. Okay, for all these memories to be able to, because the, the amount of information is vast. It's huge. Like, my computer has 8 terabytes of hard drive in one hard drive. Terabytes. I mean, poof, blows your mind the number of things that you have. And that's... Like, huge, right? Because this vast amount of information needs to be stored, they try to make the storage bigger and bigger. And because of the physics of it, the bigger the data it gets, the slower its uh, storage and retrieval becomes. It's, it's, it's quite easy to think about. If you have four playing cards, and I'll tell you which one is five, which one is a 
queen or whatever. Which one is the, the ace of club? It's four cards. You, four cards. You, you pick one, you say, this is the one, right? But if I give you 500 cards and I say, pick the ones that are ace of club, you know how long it's going to take? It's the exact same thing. So to be able to be able to process things fast, they can make the processor only so fast, not, not fast enough to, to be able to do all the processes we need. So what they need to do, they need to be able to transfer the data as fast as they can. What they, what they came up with says we need big chunks of data, no problem. We're going to have the lake analogy, which means the big storage, we're going to put all the data over there. We don't want to use the whole thing. It's impossible. You have eight terabytes of data where there's probably 3,000 movies. You don't want to watch all the 3,000 movies at the same time. You want to watch one of them, right? So that one thing you bring it to RAM, which is putting it in the bucket. Uh, sorry, era. RAM is the one that everything gets executed from. So it goes to the RAM. And now from RAM to CPU to make it faster, they even make it smaller storages that is invisible. You can't see it. They are all inside CPU. So inside CPU, there are two types of memory. One is called cache. The other one is called register. Cache, you have around two megs. When I say two megs, it's a very small amount. Registers are only 32. Not 32K, 1, 2, 3, 32. See how fast they can get. So that's how, they, that's how they process so fast, because they get small chunks very quickly, OK? And then whenever it's needed, they're going to get a new barrel. That's why sometimes you see things run and then pause and then run and pause. It's because of all these things, OK? So we understand what it is. But yes? Yes. You're talking about SSD hard drives, no, 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 solid no, state. No, no, your RAM is bigger. Yeah. That, oh, it's, it's not faster. It, it, it appears faster. Let me just, let me tell you what happens, okay? You, you want to process some information, correct? You bring one barrel over here and you get bucket, bucket from this barrel, correct? When it's finished, what you have to do? You have to run to the lake, get another barrel, right? Now, you, if you have a cart big enough that you can bring five barrels from the lake here, then you don't need to go back over there again. You're closer to these things, correct? Therefore, it appears to be faster because you don't have that what we call bottleneck. That, that the going to the lake and coming back is not holding you too much. That's why the bigger the RAM, the faster it gets. But then you have a CPU that is certain amount of processing power, and then your RAM becomes 16 gigs and it's fast. When you make it 32, it didn't make any difference. It means you reach the capacity speed of your CPU now. It doesn't matter how big this gets, it can't go faster than that. Okay? Deep breath. We kind of understand how computer works, but we don't care. All we need to think is to what, see what the memory is. We, we, all those things are transparent. Okay? The only thing we need to know is that whatever gets executed comes, comes into RAM. And from RAM to CPU, it's transparent for us. We don't need to care that such a thing called cache exists. I just I was stupid enough to mention it because I thought you, it, it's been covered in ULI, so you know what I'm talking about. But that was, that's, that's the whole thing, and that's probably it will cause this session to go to the next day because we're not going to have enough time. But anyways. So what I was saying is that this uh, RAM of ours, uh, we don't, CPU, we should think that CPU directly fiddles with these. Assume that. How it gets it from here, we don't care. It's like you are eating from your plate. How are you going to eat? With spoon or you're going to put your face in it? It doesn't make any difference. You are eating your food from the plate. That's how we don't care. We just need to know that CPU goes in here and picks the stuff up, and picks stuff up here using their sequence number. Some magic happens inside the RAM that the access to these addresses is also instantaneous, which means if CPU wants to go address 105 or address 3 billion, 
no difference in time. The, the speed of uh, accessing it exactly the same. So as long as we provide the address to the CPU, CPU can grab it. Okay? Are we okay with this? Now forget about all that. So we, that's only to understand what these numbers are. Got it? All right. Deep breath. When you create a variable in your C program, this is what happens. You write integer var. You see that? What happens is that a piece of this memory will be dedicated for you. It happens to be four bytes because it's an integer, right? And it tags it as var. Where that var is written, we don't care. Magically, it's there. Which means whenever you say var, the, your program knows where it is. And when you say var is equal to something, it actually puts the value. Or, or if you say uh, something like, let me bring it over here, maybe. And if you say double D var, that's a double variable, right? So somewhere else that it has space, you don't know where they are put. This is the decision of the uh, compiler and the decision of the operating system and how everything is working because it's not only your program, 500 things, 500. <laughs> 5,000 things are running at the same time on your computer. All of them are using this RAM. Everybody shares this RAM. The RAM is not like two of them. It's one. Everybody's sharing it. And that why we call it an operating system, it's, just, it's not just the name. It's the system that operates everything. It decides which variable goes where, which executable sits where. It's its job. And that's why you tell to operating system, I want this program to get executed and therefore it gets executed. When you go on matrix, you write the name of the program and you hit enter, it runs. Essentially, you are telling to the operating system, pick my program out of the hard drive, put it in RAM and run it, okay? So all these variables, where they sit in memory, we don't know. But we have their name, why do we need to know? Why do I need to know where var is? All I'm interested in is that I have four integers, I have an integer that is four bytes, and it can get a number this big, and I can access it anytime I want. Why do I care where it is? Seriously, why do you care where, where this double is? We don't care. And because of that fact, when you actually set the variable to something, in, in an instant, the bit pattern inside that integer gets set to the number you want whatever you put in there. Are we okay with that? All right. <clears throat> and the same thing happens with the double value that you put. So it is same for all the variables you create with absolutely no difference. Are we okay with this? Down to this point is life is beautiful. This is up to half of the semester. You're just doing for loops. Everything's fine and dandy. I created an integer. I put a uh, zero in it, and I mm, add one to it, and life is beautiful. But sometimes you need to have a remote control, which means you create a double in some, one, in some function, and you want another function to change the double inside this function without actually being in that function. You've done it. Scanf. You call scanf. Your variable is in main. You, call, you are calling the function scanf, telling to scanf, put some value in this variable. Right? How does scanf, scanf has the body and scope of its own. It's not in main. How does it do it? We want to know how. Actually, we do have a new type that I want to teach you. That type is just another integer. We call that a pointer. Pointer PTR. Pointer PTR is exactly like an integer. Absolutely no difference. OK? The only difference is that the job of the pointer is to hold the address of other pieces of memory. 
So pointer's job is to hold 108 in it or hold 132 in it to just keep track of where things are. We call that a pointer. So essentially, if I actually say pointer PTR is equal, if I say PTR is 102, like any integer, 102 will go into it. What that, what that means for us is that now that pointer PTR is pointing to address 102. It's just an integer, but the purpose of it is that I want to point to address 102. That's all it does. How we're going to go through it later. We'll see. Okay? So, but that's not good for us. 102, nothing is in 102. Why do I need to have the address of 102? It's, it doesn't belong to me. For me, what I'm interested in is either 108 that the var starts with or 132 that the var starts with, right? These are the two things that I'm interested about. Why do I care some junk piece of memory as why? Right? Because of that, I like to be able to actually put 108 in it. So it actually points to my property so I can tell to Greg over here, can I have that coffee? So I'm pointing to that coffee so Greg can go get it for me. Do you understand why we need pointers? Because I need to be able to point things everywhere and say, do things with them. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, your shoulder hurts. Oh. <laughs> All right. Are we okay down to this one? Yeah, oh yeah. Is that, your shoulder is okay? Okay. So since that thing covers those eight bytes, point like 109 or 10, like that, that's error. So that's the thing. Um, let's put it this way, okay? You always point to the address of a beginning of stuff. It doesn't make sense to point halfway through. <laughs> you usually sh show where things begin, right? That's what it is. So if, and if you don't, that's the rule here. We always point to where things begin. So what is the address of PTR now? 116, correct? So what is the address of var? What is the address of, don't say anything, dvar? 132, okay? So. But that doesn't make sense because, as I mentioned to you, how many of you know where the integer i is when you are creating index for your loop? <laughs> you don't know. You just know it's an i. Where it is, you don't know. So we need to somehow extract it, correct? How do we do that? There is something called address of. So I can actually say ptr is equal to address of var. What happens? Now PTR holds the address of that. So 108 goes into it. Got it? And if I want to ask Greg to bring that coffee to me, I have to say, bring the target of that thing, of this pointer. <laughs> target of my finger over here. So she's going to say, oh, finger is pointing to that coffee. He's going to go pick that one. So if I was to use my hand to point that coffee, I'm not going to say that coffee. I'm going to bring that to me, bring the target of this to me. Do we understand that? So if I somehow want to put something in that variable, what I need to do, I need to tell to the compiler, in target of PTR, put 2345. What is the target of PTR, people? What is the target of PTR here? Var is the target of PTR. Are we okay with this? Var is the target of PTR, are we okay? Var is target of PTR, are we okay with this? Okay, so, so for, it wasn't, I, I didn't have a long street, so I had to do it like this. That doesn't count, that means this goes over there. <laughs> okay, so that's that. So. <coughs> <coughs> so the result of that is actually 2, 3, 4, 5 will go in var. But if I said just PTR is equal to var, then it would be something completely gobbledygook, right? P 
PTR is equal. If I didn't have target of over here, then PTR would have been 2, 3, 4, 5 instead of 108. Target of it means see where PTR is pointing to and put stuff in there. Are we okay with this? Questions down to this point? Oh, give me a second. Give me a second. So, I hate it when smart people asking questions that I'm supposed to, about to say. So, if I say print F percent the var, obviously what's going to get printed is 2, 3, 4, 5. Are we okay with this? And if I say print F target of PTR, obviously against 2, 3, 4, 5 is going to get printed, correct? But if I say print PTR, I put percent U over here, I'll explain later. What's going to get printed is actually the address of. Correct? Are we okay? We're okay with this, right? Good. Why do I say percent U? Because pointer is an integer, but it's a special integer. It cannot be negative. Remember you said minus 1 and I shouted? You cannot, you cannot have minus one in a pointer. It doesn't make sense. You don't have minus second <laughs> bytes, right? Minus 50 second bytes. You can't do that, right? There is no minus. Because of that, if you want to print actually a content of a pointer, you have to put percent U. So if you print it, that's what's going to happen. Yes? Yes. Yeah. So target of PTR, right? Like literally English, target of PTR. OK? So. But there is a problem with this design. The problem is this. What if I want to set the PTR to address of DVAR now? Well, that was your question, right? Yeah. So if I, if I want to do that, and I want to set the target of PTR to 2345.5678, how does it know it's 8 bytes? We just put. Four bytes over there, right? How does it know it's eight bytes? So, sadly, that's not going to work. We want to do this. It's not going to work. So, we need to create a pointer for each type. We need to add one more thing in here. We cannot just say pointer. To actually make this happen, I have to say, integer pointer PTR. I cannot just say PTR. I have to say this PTR is a pointer to point to integers. Each pointer, each thing has its own place. I have to say this is designed to point to a pointer. So I'm going to say integer pointer PTR. <clears throat> and now if I actually say PTR is equal to address of bar, it makes sense. Because PTR is designed to do so, and all the things that happens will happen. And now what I can do is to actually create a double pointer, call it DPTR, that its job is to hold the address of doubles. Now I can say DPTR is equal to address of DVAR, and then go through it with the rest of the things. And say, OK, now the target is that. Because the type of the pointer is a double pointer, it knows what's sitting at the target is 8 bytes. Therefore, it can put the information in it. And uh, from there, uh, all the good stuff happens exactly as the other one. So when I say print the var, it's going to print the value. If I say target of DPTR, it's going to again print the var because it's the same. If I say print f only DPTR, then I'm going to say print the address. Because it's a pointer, it's still percent u. All pointers, no matter what the target is, are the same size. It's like an envelope. If you want to send an envelope to a government building or somebody's house, the same envelope goes everywhere. You don't have to make a bigger envelope for a government building because the building is bigger, right? All the addresses are the same size. Because of that, pointer to an integer and pointer to a double are identical. We OK with this? Or yes. And, and then you point, point it to a double? You, you're confusing the heck out of the computer. Yeah, it's, it's like, if it's like, tell you, if it's like, I fill this with whiskey and I'm going to say, have, keep it, have its water, and you drink it. What's going to happen? That's exactly what's going to happen over there. Co computer's going to go, ah, what are you doing? 
Okay, we don't do that. This is not whiskey. This is Tim Horton's coffee, by the way. <laughs> yeah, special order. Anyways, so <clears throat> let's try it. So now you don't try it. I'm trying it. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to say, uh, what I'm going to say, I'm going to say integer a, uh, integer val, let's write exactly that, correct? Then in here, I'm going to say integer pointer, uh, uh, what did we call it? PTR, okay. Now I'm going to say PTR is equal to address of uh, var, correct? Now I can say target of PTR is set to two, one, two, three, four, correct? Now I'm going to say printf, uh, what do I say? The exact same thing. I'm going to say percent %d, and I'm going to say over here, uh, I'm going to say var percent %d. And I'll go to new line, and in here I'm going to put the variable. Oh, not there. Then I'm going to say printf, uh, what is the next one? Uh, uh, target of uh, PTR, and that's going to be target of PTR. And printf in here I'm going to say uh, uh, PTR itself. And obviously, in here, I'm going to say percent %d and go to new line. Now, this is, this is uh, it's lowercase. I put it like this. It's lowercase is the correct one. And percent %u in here, new line. And in here, what I'm going to say, what am I going to say? Uh, ETR. So let's run the program. This is what we have. OK? Yes. Shush. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, so we'll, we'll come to it. <laughs> so, so are we OK with this? Do we understand this? So th there's actually a good side effect of this one. What I can do over here is actually this. Now I can say over here something like uh, uh, void get int. Remember the get int we had? Now in here I can say address of, uh, uh, no, not address of. I, I'm going to say over here integer pointer PTR. Okay? And what I do over here, I can say printf, print. Uh, enter a number, enter a number, and in here I can say scanf. Now in here I'm going to say percent %d, and in here I'm going to say address of, no, no address of, PTR is already address. So just PTR, I'm not going to put address over there anymore. Okay, and now in this program, I can do this. I can say get int, and in here I put address of var. And then I'm going to say printf, you entered uh, percent %d in a new line, and I'm going to put over here var. So what happens over here is this. <clears throat> when in this get int of mine, I pass address of var to get int. This PTR is will point where var is, correct? And when scanf gets that address, puts the value it in where PTR is pointing to, to target of PTR, which is var in another function. So now if I run the program, I can actually, what I can do over here is actually, builder is really, Oh, yes, 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 yes. <sighs> CRT secure no bindings. Where is it? It doesn't ask that. So I got it before that. Uh, 
address of var integer pointer. Anyways, no, 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 it's, no, it's point. Anyways, that's, it will work, don't worry about it, I'll explain later, but uh, let's, let me go through something first before we do this. But that's gonna happen. What I wrote, assume that it worked, and I actually did work, it worked. I'll, I'll, t I'll come to it in a second. I don't wanna debug something that is not important. There is a problem. Uh, there is no pointer address of our target. There is no such a thing in C language. I fooled you. Look at this. And take a look at my header file over here. So I said, anywhere you see target of, put an asterisk. Anywhere you see address of, put an ampersand. Anywhere you see a pointer, put an asterisk. And I will explain to you what they mean, because if I put that originally, all you see is integer star p. You don't know what does it mean. Okay? So now let's take a look at it and see actually what the devil these things mean actually. So pointer in C is presented with an asterisk. Okay? Which means when I want to write this, instead of integer pointer PTR, I have to say integer asterisk PTR. But if I hear you telling me integer asterisk, I'll kill you. Say it what it means. That's not integer asterisk, that integer pointer. Say it, say what it means and you'll learn it. Okay? So integer pointer PTR or, what did I do? Or double pointer PTR. But as you know, the asterisk actually belongs to the type, not to the pointer, not to the variable. You see many books for some unknown reason, they put the asterisk beside the type. That's not what it means. The asterisk actually belongs to the type. Together, they mean integer pointer, double pointer, student pointer, car pointer, whatever you have, it doesn't matter. Pointer. And the size of all them, all of them is the same, but the size of target is always different. So address of is presented by ampersand. That's why whenever you did scanf, you put an ampersand beside it. Because you needed to pass the address to scanf. So scanf knows where the devil the variable is to put the value in it. Okay? And whenever you see address of, so essentially DPTR is address of DVAR, and the address actually belongs to DVAR. The sad part is that target of is <laughs> presented by asterisk too. And that's what's confusing the heck out of everyone. But I'll make it clear, okay? So all the places that you have target of, We'll put asterisk, and this is called target of DPTR, target of DBTR, and so on and so forth, okay? So, target of and pointer, they both are presented with asterisk. Now, I'm going to show you something that I think it, it, it explains exactly what it means. So, I can just write over here, and it's perfectly seen. Okay, so when you see an asterisk, and the asterisk actually makes sense, you look at it and say, oh, I know that. That means multiplication. A multiplies by B. Okay? Whenever you see an asterisk and say, what the heck is that? When you set that, that's target of. That means B is a pointer, and you are saying target of. So let's call it P so you don't get confused with the other. Okay? Whenever asterisk comes after a type, 
That means it belongs to type, and together they mean pointer. So if you have int pointer p, it actually means integer pointer p. And that means pointer. Got it? So if asterisk comes before a variable and looks strange, that's target of. It means the variable is a pointer. There is no other way. By looking at it, you must be 100% sure that this is a pointer. OK? There is no other way. If it makes sense, they are both regular variables and multiplication is happening. If it comes after a type, it means together they mean pointer of that type. OK? So that's that. Oh, it's here. So, if asterisk comes after a type, it means type pointer. Integer pointer PTR, double pointer PTR, or employee pointer EPTR. It means PTR is a pointer that points to a structure of employee with 500 things in it. Doesn't make any difference. Pointer is a pointer. Okay? If asterisk comes in front of a variable as a unary operator, when I say unary operator, it means minus 5, minus 6, not A. It comes before the thing. Together, it means target of, like A is equal to target of P, like target of T is equal to X, like A is equal to B multiplied by target of C, like E is equal to target of M multiplied by C multiplied by C. OK? And that's that. That's the, the version of it. So pointers are like that. So coming back to this silly program of mine, I'm just going to save it. And I'm, and I'm going to come back. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to call it a fake pointer. Let's see. And I'm going to bring back the C. This slide, I originally designed it for my IPC classes, but believe me, every single OP244 student of me have seen it. So in here, what I have is variable, integer pointer p, that's equal to address of var, and target of ptr is 124, and this is target of PTR. And it works the exact same way with absolutely no difference, right? You just don't need to put uh, uh, anything beside it, right? And please appreciate that every single time the address is something different. You see this address? Now take a look. Every single time it's a different number. We don't know. We don't need to know. All I need to do is to write that get int of mine, which actually I had the file secure, no warning. So something was wrong with that code of mine. I have to check out later on. So in here now I can say void get. Oh, I had utils already. Utils has a get int in it. <laughs> Otherwise, that example would have been nice, eh? <laughs> so. <laughs> Get uh, int, how do I write it? Get int ptr, just to write the thing. So in here, I'm going to say integer pointer um, uh, vptr. That's the value of the pointer. Now in here, I'm going to say printf enter a number. See, I prepared all that thing, and I forgot to actually uh, Remove the utils.h. <laughs> so that was my mistake. So now in here, I'm going to say scanf. Obviously, I do not need to put an ampersand beside the, the VPTR because it is already a pointer. It is already address. VPTR just by itself. It, it is already address of, right? That's a pointer. It holds the address of. I don't need to put an ampersand. Now in here, I can actually say uh, get int PTR. And I put address of var in here. And now I can say, you entered, pardon me? Uh, 
Actually, they are both correct. <laughs> they are both correct. Because they are, take a look. You are saying, should I put PTR or should I put address of PTR? What is this in between? <laughs> At least they are the same. <laughs> right? Whichever you put, it works. And PTR is a what? Thank you. PTR is a what? OK. Address of a variable is a pointer. It's just a, it's as if you're saying, can I put 124? Or if, if I say, if I say, if i is equal to 10, you're going to say, should I put i in the function or 10? I'm going to say they're equal. And you're telling me, but it wants an integer. I'm saying i is an integer. 10 is an integer. They are both integer. One is literal, the other one is not. And it's the same thing. PTR is a pointer. Address of var is a pointer. But this one is a literal one. It's a constant one. It won't change. You cannot change this value. You can change that as much as you want. Right? So now if I actually run this beautiful program of mine, and you say you entered percent D, and what do I do next? And in here, I say var. Now if I run the program, it actually runs, and it works the exact same, like it enter a, a, a number. In here, I put uh, a number, and that number is received. So as you see now, my get int in here is changing a variable remotely using the address of it. And that's something that, for some reason, everybody is scared of. There's nothing in it. Don't give it extra credit. Pointer is just an integer. Its job is to hold the address of other things. It's just an integer. Its job is to hold the address of other things. Enjoy it. <laughs> and you can use it for many different things. I will come to it, you'll see. It has many uses, OK? <clears throat> Which brings us to the next thing. Like, uh, surprise, surprise. So in here, I'm going to say funk and a point. Uh, uh, I'm going to say B, and I'm going to say real pointers and functions. Like, for example, let's say you don't want to do the validation inside the integer, inside your get int function. You want just get int function to tell if the read was successful or not. How can you do that? Now you can return a Boolean and pass the address of integer instead. You still get your integer, and if the va integer returns a false, you know something went wrong. So if you don't want to deal with the error right there, which is actually very common. In real life, you want to separate the logic of user interface with your business logic. You don't want the two things to mix. So it's many times this is needed. You need, or you want to get three things. Let's say you want to get three different values that are not in a structure. Let's say I want to get an integer and a double and, a, and something else. And they are not in a structure. I just want to get the three things. How do I do that? How can I return three things using a function? The answer is that I don't return anything. Instead, I'm going to pass addresses to it and make it remotely change it. I can change 500 things if I want to. Then I have to pass 500 arguments, which is very crazy, but you can. OK? So, so that's that. And just to show you how important these things are, I'm going to show you something else. So this kind of makes things clear. Integer a3, and I'm going to say set to uh, 1, 2. Uh, 3, 4, uh, actually let's put 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3. So just we know what is in what, okay? Okay? Now, take a look at this. Printf percent D, get ready for this. Target of A. So what you thought as an array being series of things, it's essentially one pointer 
pointing to a big chunk of memory. <laughs> and when you put index, when you're saying A0, you're actually telling, asking the compiler, from address A, go zero integers further, which means the first one. From address A, go one integer further. It goes to second one. From address A, go to two integers further, and it goes further. So saying, <coughs> saying, essentially saying printf A in here is the same as saying A zero. And you can actually do that with a pointer. It doesn't make any difference. They are identical things. And if you want to say printf percent %d and address, uh, and, uh, and uh, so let's do it reverse. So if you, if you say a1, you can say print percent D. You never do this. This is OOP345. Okay? What I'm going to show you is OOP345. Okay? You can say go to target of A plus 1. It's the same thing. From that address, go one integer further. The compiler is start smart enough to know because this is an integer pointer. One means one integer, that means four bytes. If it was double, then one would have mean four because double means four bytes. Or if it's a student that has 50 things in it and the size of a structure is 200 bytes, then one student means 200 bytes. And that's how the arrays are. Everything is done in the computer using addresses of things. That's why we need to know it. And that's why we call C language a middle level language. It's not high level. It's not completely English language. It's not low level. It's not CPU. It's middle. But you can treat it any way you want. You can use an array like an array with index, or you can do low level, deal with the address, and use target of. OK? Don't do that. Because like, if you write something like this, it's like a show off. If you do something, do it in my class, fine. But if somebody wants a sample code, you create an array, never use it like this. That means you're confusing the heck out of the person who wants to debug your code. OK? So don't use stuff like this. Understand the meaning of it, but don't use it. It's like you know how to curse, but you're a very polite person. When the time comes, you can blow the steam off. But generally be polite and nice. OK? Understand the meaning. Know how it works. Don't use it until, unless you have to. And we'll come to it later on in uh, 245345. Anyways, so I had a slide for that too. I don't know if I did this for C or C++, but I'm going to use it anyway. So it's <clears throat> essentially the same thing. I have the memory, right? And we create a variable. We have one thing, right? Uh, and you have a pointer, pointer points to the beginning of the variable. We all know this, right? <clears throat> when you uh, create a double, you do this. Am I doing the same thing? OK, but when you are creating an like that, OK, but when you create an array, you're actually creating five things in memory. And AR. So, so this is what the array looks like. You, and when you put AR, it's actually like this. So when you write an array AR5, you actually have one pointer pointing to the beginning of five integers. And compiler, and that's one of the reasons that C language doesn't know what is the size of an array in a function. In a function, you have to pass the size because it, C only knows where it begins. How many are they? It doesn't know. That's why you, whenever you are passing an array to a function, you have to pass the size. C doesn't know. C just knows it begins. It's an array begins over there, okay? And and it keeps going. So it's essentially the same thing. You can if if you say target of AR is two, three, four, five, it's going to go over there. If you say AR two, it's going to go over there. If you say target of AR plus two, it's going to. So it's the same thing with absolutely no difference. And that's how arrays are in 
and C language, and that's that. Now, let's start coding, okay? Right, start, do the get int that I did, and I'm not gonna put it up there. I want you to do it yourself and see how it works. So write the get int, the simple one that I wrote, and there's nothing in here to copy it from. I want you to use your memory, okay? Use your memory. It's just three lines of code, people. Actually, two lines of code. Three lines, three lines. Okay, do it and see if you can. So your, your, I want you to write, so this is what I want you to do. Okay, so I'm going to call this C array. So what I want you to do is this, write void, get int, PTR, or, yeah, Yeah, get in PTR and write something in here so I can do this. So I can say get int PTR and I put over here integer A and I can say get int PTR address of A and I can say printf you entered um, percent D. And a. Write the code I'm coming to, <clears throat> and I'm going to, as soon as you successfully have done it, I'm going to add more juice to it. So we're going to make this get int work even better. How much time do we have till the end of? Wow, we have half an hour. I thought we don't have time to do this. Yeah. That's why I said today is like hand-on. I want to teach it, and I want you to do it right away.